Well, hey, everybody, and welcome to AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas, the 88th Cotton Bowl, just a couple hours away from kickoff. We're thrilled to be here with you on Buckeyes Now, part of the Fan Nation Network in the Sports Illustrated Media Group. If this is the first time you've ever joined us, and we know there are always new viewers and new listeners along the way, we certainly appreciate you jumping on. I'm Brendan Gulick, along with Anthony Meglin. If you are a regular, we certainly appreciate your continued support. You can find us on our YouTube channel where you can subscribe there, and certainly all the uh, all the news and info you need on the team, especially leading up to kickoff and tonight, immediately after the game, available over on BuckeyesNow.com. Anthony, this is uh, a game that has a weird feel to it for some because I think if we're being honest about it, it's Missouri Super Bowl, right? This is a huge platform for a Missouri team that's very, very good. And in some ways for Ohio State, despite it being the exact same game with the exact same stakes, it has a little bit of a consolation prize feel to it. And so one of the things I'm most looking forward to seeing early in this game is how all of that noise leading up to this game impacts or doesn't impact this Ohio State team. How locked in, how focused are they? We know most of the starters are going to play that normally have played this year, but uh, want to see early in this game just how locked in they are. Yeah, no question. And for Missouri, I was just reading some articles, you know, earlier in the day today. And, you know, they had there was one that I read that all of their seniors were so bought in that they were all going to try to play in this game, regardless of if they're going pro or if they're going to be insurance agents next year. Like they they were all going to try and play um, in this game because it means so much. Like to your point, this is their Super Bowl. And I think on the flip side of things for Ohio State, you know, if I'm in that locker room, the message is simple. Right. This isn't where we wanted to be. We wanted to be in the college football playoff. We wanted to be competing for a national championship. But at the end of the day, you're putting on a jersey and you're putting on a helmet that is that's going to say Ohio State on it. And there's a certain pride that comes along with that. So regardless, if this is the pinstripe bowl played in New York or if this is you know the Cotton Bowl played in Dallas, Texas, we want to show out and, and put our best foot forward and show the country that, hey, we're not where we want to be, but we're still a very good team and a very good program. And that's what good programs do. And I think that in my opinion, should be the message leading into this one. Yeah, I, I think it has been, right? Um, again, I'm not trying to manufacture something about the Buckeyes. The reality is they're here, and most of the guys that you think would have chosen otherwise uh, have decided, no, we're, we're going to play. Um, yeah. So it, it feels like a lot of that has already been decided. And, and when you put the pads on and you go out and play, it's not like you play any less hard or any less focused, but I think there can be – something to learn from whether or not things are really crisp or if there's any sloppiness, some mistakes, an early turnover, things like that. And obviously one of the big storylines coming in here is going to be Ohio State's quarterback, Devin Brown, right? He's he's getting his first opportunity as a collegiate starting quarterback to play in an enormous, gorgeous facility. You know, some would argue the nicest facility for football anywhere in the country. Uh, and he's going to do it in front of a fan base for Missouri that really, really wants to win. And I'm sure the Tigers have traveled well and will be loud in here. And, and by the way, regardless of his opponent, he's got to make a good impression because Ohio State, you know, if, if they can go into the offseason feeling really good about Devin Brown being their quarterback, feels like that's a totally different tone than if he doesn't play well today. Yeah, absolutely. And this is such a great test for him. And it's been cool to learn uh, more about him as we've led up to this. And, you know, you're seeing tweets and things and stories that, you know, he's such a great leader. You know, he's getting the team a bunch of stuff and doing this and doing that and just putting his, be his best foot forward to show this group that, hey, I can be this guy. And I'm really excited for him today because what we know about him this year, he's got some mop-up time early in the year. He had some opportunities during the middle of the Big Ten play. You think back to the Purdue game where they put him in some goal line packages and it maybe didn't go the way that they wanted to. But this is a chance to wipe the slate clean and show Buckeyes Nation and show his teammates that, you know, hey, I can do this and, and I can be the next guy uh, for this football team. And, you know, today, it'll, it, today he's got a good opportunity to do so. I don't think that this, this Missouri defense – is one that you're going to write home about. You know, I think that there's going to be opportunities to throw the ball down the field, to make big plays, um, and then to start establishing himself as the next quarterback for Ohio State. And it starts, it frankly, starts today. It does. And and he's, I, I, I don't think he's going to have his top target, uh, you know, on this team all season available. Nobody has said anything publicly about Marvin Harrison Jr. playing or not playing. Uh, I think if you read the tea leaves, he's probably not going to play today. Uh, 
Um, Marvin's been here with the team all week. This this has that that Chris Olave feeling for me from a couple years ago in the Rose Bowl, where there was no way he wasn't going to be around his teammates. Uh, Marvin was in you know Ohio State branded street clothes during practice, riding a bike, just being around. Wants to be here, but you know ultimately I I think he's going to make the decision not to play. Um, I guess we'll find out for sure in a couple of hours. But everybody else is pretty much expected to play in terms of those who might opt in or opt out. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily expect, unfortunately, Tommy Eichenberg to play, um, learning that he is pretty banged up. And I hope he plays. I would personally be a little surprised if Tommy was in street clothes on the sideline. He just seems like the kind of kid to me that even if he's not going to get in the game, that there's no way he's not going to stand on the sideline in, in full pads and a helmet and at least helmet, have yeah. the feel like he's right there. Um, but I I would be a little surprised, kind of what I'm hearing, that, that you know I don't think Tommy's going to play. Beyond that, I sort of expect everybody else to be out there on both sides of the ball, and that's good news for the Bucs. It's great news, and it's funny. I, I laugh when you talk about Tommy, but he's just one of those guys. He's football through and through, so he'll have his helmet strapped up, ready to go. But, you know, th this has the feel to it. You think back to the Rose Bowl game a couple years ago um, against Utah where, you know, it was the Jackson Smith and Jigba coming out party. And that's, like, the fun part for me is that – um, when you watch Ohio State year over year, it's never it's always just a reload um, at every position. Right. You know, you, you're going to lose guys like talking about this receiver room. You'll lose Marvin Harrison. Sure. But who's going to be next? Who's going to be that guy that that comes in next year and that we get really excited about? You know, there's going to be a great, you know, a bunch of great names that, that could put, throw their name in the hat. Um, and I think that, like I said, this is a good opportunity to do so because I don't love this Missouri defense. Um, and that's what I'm really excited about. You know, the, everything's going to kind of sort itself out, but I'm excited to, to find out who's next for the playmakers uh, for, for Ohio State coming up in 20, into 2024. And Missouri's defense, in addition to have not, you know, necessarily put up gaudy numbers, they've been good, but they're not elite. Uh, and they're a little shorthanded, missing a couple of key guys today. So I think that will impact them as well. Um you know, Ohio State, when their defense is out there this year, there have been very few teams across the country that have yeah. statistically performed better. You know, you're going up against a team that you've had a month to scout. And uh, as you pointed out on the offensive side, you know, it's it's basically I, I don't want to call it entirely a three man show, but there are three guys statistically that jump off the page. Bray Cook's a really good quarterback. Cody Schrader's had a terrific season truly one of the most accomplished running backs in the country uh and luther is a hell of a wide receiver and he's going to be a difficult matchup it'll be fun because we haven't seen this ohio state defense in about a month right and it's like we're, we got so used to watching them every week and watching them dominate and this is truly a, a great test for them this cody strader kid is very good when the football's in his hands he's a little bit on the smaller side but he still makes big plays and he's a first team all-american has 13 touchdowns on the year uh, just over or just at 1500 yards, he's got 1400 or 1499 yards on the season. So he makes plays happen. Um, and when you're the quarterback uh, with guys like with him and with like Luther or with guys with, excuse me, like Luther Braden, um, it makes Brady Cook's job very easy. You know, he, he's not going to light up the scoreboard. He's very efficient uh, playing the quarterback position, but he's very good at it. So the guy circled for me, uh, and if I'm Ohio State, is Cody Schrader in the backfield because he's electric and, and he can really make a lot of things happen. You know, this is um, this is the kind of environment that is set up to basically celebrate what you've accomplished this year. But it's been very difficult, I think, for Ohio State fans to be too locked in on what's still to come today because there are still so many questions about what you're going to see next year. Obviously, National Signing Day just happened, and it was a bit more of a dramatic, although successful, dramatic signing day, maybe more so than normal. Um, you know, the quarterback question is an important one for sure. There's probably going to be changes, I think, on Ryan Day's staff. How many and how soon? I guess we'll wait and see. You know, remember a couple of years ago, Matt Barnes, as the defensive coordinator, it was announced while the Buckeyes were in Pasadena that he was leaving and, and taking the job to go to Memphis. Um, I, I don't know how quickly some changes may or may not be announced by the Buckeyes today, but, you know, there are a lot of people clamoring for some changes of certain coaches. We're going to find out if that happens. You know, it's it's hard to to be too focused on the here and now when you know you're building toward next year's hopeful national championship caliber team. And yet I, I think you're missing the point a little bit if you get 
too caught up in what's to come because this is a really good team. And the reality is when, when you lose one game, that really stinks. But, man, this, this group has been really worth celebrating this year. Yeah, no question. And the, the thing that's always the hardest part about a day like today is, like you said, it's a celebration uh, of this season, of what they've accomplished. But it's also the last time this group is going to be together. You know, what, what, there's going to be changes. Guys are going to leave. Coaches are going to leave. And that's a sign of good program. You know, when, when co your coaches start getting plucked, that means you're doing the right things. And obviously that happens at Ohio State. Uh, whether it's hiring a new job or moving on to, to find somebody better. Uh, but this is the last day that this group is going to be together as a team. And it's that bittersweet part of it. So while it stinks and while it's, it's such a bummer, there's so many good things to look back on from this group. And tonight's the culmination of it, put it together, a great show, send everybody off um, the right way and, and put the season to bed. And then let's get ready um, to, to kind of run it back and, and go, go bigger um, in 2024. All right, let's talk a couple keys to the game here. And while the national anthem rendition is being practiced behind me, I'll let you start. What uh, what are you most looking forward to watching? Yeah, we, we touched on it. It's it's on offense. It's Devin Brown. You know, what is he going to show us? For me, what I'm looking for is, is efficiency. OK, one of the big things about him is he's got the arm. He's got everything that you want when you're throwing the football and he's athletic. We watched him run around um, and make plays with his feet. But the decision making is is what's been his downfall. I'd love to see him be making really really good decisions today, delivering the ball where it needs to, and make, then using his athletic ability and using his arm uh, to make big plays. That's kind of uh, when he's on the field. That's what I'm looking for. When the defense is on the field, I'm excited to see how they stop Cody Schrader. You know this, like I said, I, I'm a fan of his just from watching from afar. Um, he's fun to watch with the football in his hands. What is Ohio State going to do and how are they going to going to stop him? Obviously, you're going to be down uh, Tommy Eichenberg potentially, uh, as you mentioned. But what are they going to do um, to, to stop this, uh, stop him? Um, because he can get you in the pass game. He can get you in the run game. So I'm excited to see that. And then the last note that that uh, that I'm looking for, I touched on it. Who's next up for Ohio State? Who's going to be that next guy, that next Marvin Harrison Jr., that next Garrett Wilson, that next Jackson Smith and Jigba? Who's it going to be? Um, and I think we'll get a get a get a view into to that answer um, later today. I definitely share those sentiments. I guess to expand maybe a little more detailed on a couple of them, um, I want to see the freshman wide receivers, right? I mean, I, I hope that we get to a point where it's not just Mecca Buka, you know, uh, taking a lot of spotlight. The fact that you don't have Julian Fleming on the team anymore because he's transferred, and and assuming Marvin Harrison Jr. is not going to play. Those are two guys that have been really, really important to this offense all year long. So the question becomes who gets the majority of those next reps? And history would tell us Carnell Tate would be first up there. But beyond him, to Brandon Innes, is it Noah Rogers? Who, who slides in next? Um, because that group is ridiculously talented and, and you know always the group that uh, Buckeye fans want to pay attention to. Uh, I hope Travion Henderson puts on a good show today. Um, I'm very interested to see what Travion's decision is regarding his status for next year. Is he coming back? Is he going to go to the draft? Um, I have my personal feelings, but I'm going to leave that out of that today. I think Travion is a terrific running back, and uh, I, I hope that he plays his heart out for Ohio State tonight. His speed is really difficult to match, even though they've done that certainly with some, some quick backs in the SEC. Uh, he is a very dynamic weapon for the Bucs, and when they get him in space, things look really good. So I'm looking forward to watching him play. And then on the defensive side, specifically at linebacker, you know, Cody Simon's already announced he's coming back, and, and that's a huge asset for the Bucs next year. But when he's not on the field, if Tommy, or I should say, I guess when Tommy Eichenberg's not on the field, is it basically just going to be Cody and Steel Chambers? Do we see some C.J. Hicks? Does Gabe Powers get some opportunities? Where where do those next linebacker reps come from? Um, that's that's going to have a lot of my attention on the defensive side for sure. So, looking forward to a really fun day, man. The 88th Cotton Bowl just a, a couple hours away. Can't wait. I would say would add to outside of the football. It's pretty sweet looking at you and Jerry World on the field right now. I mean, this is a stage <laughs> that's unlike anything ever, and I know you've been able to get to walk around and see some things and. It's just, that's awesome. That's an awesome environment. It's going to be an awesome environment for some college football, and uh, I'm excited to watch it. It's truly one of the great cathedrals in uh, the United States for this great game. There are very, very few places that are as special as this one. And uh, I know it's not what the Buckeyes wanted, but it's the opportunity they've got. 
And Ryan Day made it very clear yesterday at that press conference that he wants to win and the Buckeyes are here to win. So uh, let's see if they can get it done against a very talented Missouri Tigers team coming up in a couple of hours. For Anthony Meglin, I'm Brendan Gulick. Thanks for joining us pregame here at AT&T Stadium. Can't wait to get this one kicked off in a couple hours. We've got all the latest news and info for you that you need over on BuckeyesNow.com.